Welcome back to the Data Sack Show. We are going to talk shop. Uh, Costas, uh, this is one of my favorite things where we just sort of get to go off script and talk about whatever. And uh, I think we talked about AI last time um, and I may have brought that subject up. So I think it's your turn to ask the question. Yeah, and I think it's like a great time uh, because I think you just came back from the Snowflake Summit. I wasn't there, so I'm really, really interested like to learn more about what happened there. Uh, both in terms of like what Snowflake, uh, let's say, had to say uh, about Snowflake and the industry in general, but uh, yeah. also um, I'd love to hear like what you've learned and like how what you experienced there might have changed or not, like your perspective in uh, where the industry is going. Yeah, I think I'll try to give a high like a high level summary of the sense that I got. Um, as someone who works in product marketing, I think I can tend to be cynical. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just a cynical person <laughs> in general, uh, when it comes to marketing, but you know, for a long time, I mean, relatively long time, Snowflake has been kind of pushing this concept of a data cloud and what was funny about that in practice was that everyone just still thought of it as a data warehouse and even called it a data warehouse, right? Practically on the ground, just, I mean, stuff like data warehouse is just the vernacular that people would use, data practitioners would use when they talk about it, right? Because that's yeah. was for the first, you know, however, you know, for the first, you know, since it launched and everything, it was used as a data warehouse um, yep. and still is largely used as a data warehouse, right? I mean, analytical workflows are, that's, you know, sort of the most common thing you run into. And so there was a little bit, for a while there, there was a little bit of dissonance between talking about the data cloud and practically people just thinking about Snowflake and using Snowflake as a data warehouse. And I really felt like this, Snowflake Summit was where the you could feel it shift to actually there being a lot more weight to the concept of a data cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, now, obviously, there are really smart people and visionary people sort of establishing that as a concept, and you know, product roadmaps are driving towards that. So I'm not saying that you know it was fake beforehand. I'm just saying that there is, I think, more dissonance for the average person who probably categorized. Snowflake as as a data warehouse practically in their day to day job, um, but there were just a lot of things where it really made it feel like a platform with lots of options, right? So the Nvidia announcement obviously was huge, right? So that's going to be um, pretty significant for the development of really large scale, scale really large scale AI models, which feels very different from the way that people would traditionally sort of categorize Snowflake as part of their data infrastructure, which is really interesting. The other big thing I think is container services. And so, you know, they, um, several companies announced, you know, actual um, sort of native uh, integration with container services. So you can essentially run sort of these products within container services within the Snowflake data cloud, which is, which is really interesting. Um, especially when you think about SaaS apps that have data in them, but then you can actually sort of operationalize that data within containers. Like it's very interesting, right? And so now you, all of a sudden you have all of these ideas, I think, rushing to people's heads around things that you can do and build that maybe seemed more theoretical, um, more theoretical before. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm sure I'm missing some things, but I really left summit this year with a strong conviction that there's a lot of infrastructure and they, there are other things that they released that were, you know, really neat. But with a strong conviction of like, man, we're going to see an explosion of people building really interesting things on Snowflake far mm -hmm. beyond the bounds of typical analytical workflows. Um, so I don't know. There's my high-level summary. 
yeah that's 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 super interesting uh and okay like i think like kind of makes sense uh that yeah you know like it's the data cloud and it's the, cl the cloud at the end right like it's the infrastructure to go and like build in general it's not just yeah. like the dashboards yeah um, and it's very interesting like to see the the path uh, and the journey that uh, Snowflake has, because yeah, like it's turning into like a cloud provider in a way, right? Yeah. Uh, which probably it's like okay, like the only way to justify also the multiples in the market, right? Sure, sure. Uh, but uh, okay, so you mentioned like Nvidia. Uh, what's about Nvidia? Like, what is the announcement there? Like, uh, what did they describe and? What is like how's it like the vision that they have with working like and providing like access to NVIDIA hardware? Yeah, well, actually, so I wasn't at the keynote. Um I wasn't at the keynote, so that's a full a full disclosure. But I did um I did talk to people who were at the keynote, which actually is almost a more interesting like I don't know, in some ways, maybe this is more interesting to some people, yeah. maybe not. But like, I talked to several people who were at the keynote and asked them what really stuck out to them. And this may sound funny, but I think one of the biggest things is confidence um, that there's enough horsepower there to actually do really large scale machine learning workflows and sort of develop like really large scale, um, you know, so let's just say like enterprise level ML production workflows, right? Yeah. Because yeah. like I said before, uh, people just didn't normally think about that. Right. And so with like the people that I talked to who came from the keynote, who are really excited, you know, who work for, you know, some of these people work for very large, you know, sort of maybe like Fortune 1000 ish type companies, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they didn't really talk about NVIDIA specifically, right? Or like yeah. the technical undercarriage of like what the partnership means. Mm -hmm. They more were just like, wow, like maybe we can build some really big stuff on Snowflake's platform now. Right, which was really interesting. And again, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Um, is that they sort of it was almost like a confidence thing of the horsepower actually existing. Um yeah. I don't know. That's that was that's my takeaway. And I'm probably distilling some of that wrong because I wasn't actually actually at the ah, no, no, no. Like I to be honest, and that was uh, like a follow-up question that I um I had for you. Uh it was about like the interactions that we, you had like with the people there because uh you were not um you know as a vendor, you also going there like as a vendor, you also have like the opportunity to have like a very I'd say that like almost like a interesting in between uh position right like you are not a potential customer of like snowflake there um and you are not snowflake also so you are you have like as a vendor always you have like a very unique kind of like perspective and way of interacting uh with the visitors yeah. There's people who are uh visiting so what was the, uh, I mean, you already said like uh, some stuff about the confidence that you said that they had uh, on the ML side of things. In general, like what's your, uh, what's your um, take from uh, what you had like from people visiting there, what they were asking, what they were looking for, how they felt, what like their, uh, what like the vibes that you got from them as, you know, like practitioners, right? Uh, they are, they are not vendors. They are not snowflake. Yeah, I would, this probably isn't going to surprise you, but I would, if I had to simplify it as much as possible, I would create two general groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is actually the bigger one, which we've talked about this before on the show a lot, which is people who are just trying to build a 
a high quality data practice within a company uh, mm -hmm. and who are trying to solve the basic challenges that you have when you're trying to do that. And that is, I need to get a lot of different disparate data sources into one place. Obviously the people at Snowflake are you know, doing that in the, in Snowflake's environment. And then I need to try to create some sort of value with that collected data. Um, and in many ways that kind of characterizes a lot of the traditional thinking about Snowflake as a data warehouse, right? It's a data store that allows you to easily get all of your data in, um, into Snowflake, and then the separation separation of storage and compute allows you to, you know, make smarter decisions about how you actually try to begin creating value out of that, you know, for different different use cases. And I just, you know, when you talk to people who are coming by the booth and just ask them how are you using Snowflake, it's just easy for us to forget that like a lot of companies, especially larger companies, it's just really really hard to get over the initial hump of doing the basic stuff, right? Like collecting data and even like driving really good analytics is still a very difficult problem at a lot of companies. Um, so that's sort of the first group. Now, I will say one thing that was interesting was the ecosystem of tools provided by Snowflake to do that was talked about way more. So um, like the Snowpipe streaming um, infrastructure and other things like that, where it's like, you know, you're seeing Snowflake actually now have the ability to replace what traditionally would be sort of a, you know, complicated set of Kafka pipelines and maybe like homegrown APIs and stuff. So that was kind of interesting. So I think that some people certainly felt like they had more options from Snowflake that were really viable for sort of replacing some of those traditional data flows. Anyways, that's sort of group one. And I, again, I would say that's a larger group, right? Because as much as we'd like to tell ourselves that every data practice is like super modern and sophisticated, yeah. a lot of them are still trying to do basic stuff. <laughs> um, but again, that's getting easier. The second group were, I would say this, another, a really interesting characteristic about people on the second group, they were... Um, thinking about all the new capabilities of, of Snowflake. And there was a lot of discussion around consolidating workflows, right? That's a huge problem. And especially with the traditional split between analytics workflows and ML workflows yeah. and ML ops. Yeah. Um, those, I guess maybe a good way to say it would be like, there are people who in their daily job are starting to see those things converge from yeah. a cultural standpoint at the company. Yeah. And I think a lot of that's accelerated by AI, right? And prioritizing machine learning, right? And so you're starting to see like analytics and ML meld. Yeah. And a lot of people on the ground there are there to figure out how to get more value out of their Snowflake investment, right? Like. How can we use this platform um, to create more value inside of our company? Mm -hmm. And so it's really interesting to see them, you know, they may not have used this exact phrase, but if I had to distill it and put words in all these people's mouths, which is always very dangerous, but you see their gears turning around consolidation of workflows, um, yeah. which is pretty compelling actually, right? So if you think about, Let's say there's someone who's a head of data and they have a really mature like analytics practice and then a more immature ML practice, but they can actually leverage a lot of the analytics work that's already done as like a running start for ML. And the infrastructure is already there to essentially like you don't really have to do a big infrastructure project to migrate data, move that data you know, run complex transformations on that data. It's yeah. actually just there and you can start doing ML. That is very exciting to people. And I think it should be because, I mean, that's pretty sweet if you're someone in that position. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think like a, okay, like a big problem that data infrastructure has right now, it is like fragmentation. Uh, and there's like a lot of replication also that is happening. Like at the end, 
there are, let's say, common patterns uh, that exist there, regardless of what you are doing. Like if it is ML or like, I don't know, like reporting or whatever. Um, and I don't think we have reached the point where, you know, uh, there is like a robustness in the architectures, like to provide, let's say, the best possible um, experience at the end. Because people might think that it's more about cost because you don't want like to, you know, like duplicate things. But at the end, it's not like, it's not like the cost in terms of money. Like what people don't understand is that like these things, even if they were like, let's say for free, uh, they just don't scale to the yeah. size of the problem that they are trying to solve. And actually yeah. having like such a uh, of uh, brittle infrastructure, uh, it makes, it's almost like halts down like the whole process. That's why we ended up in getting this kind of fragmentation. Like ML people at some point, they just had like to move much faster than the rest of the infrastructure there because things were happening. And they couldn't wait like for the rest of the infrastructure like to change, right? Yeah. So that's why we had like all these things. But at some point, if you want to operationalize all these things, you need to have like a common infrastructure like to work on top. And that's where like the this whole concept of the data cloud or whatever you want to call it, like makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, now who's going like to own this and if it's going to be one or like multiple, com I don't know. But um, that's, that's, uh, that's, I think like, where we are heading uh, towards. And I think it's going to be like very fascinating. Uh, I'd love to also, okay, we're like close to the end here. Uh, we talked about uh, Snowflake. There was another summit that was happening at the same time, right? Yeah. Uh, I'd love like to see, I wasn't there, uh, but I'd love to find someone who was there. And yeah. do like a shop talk and like also give like a quick update of like what happened there. Um, so let's try to figure this out and like make it happen. Let's do it. And I would say one, one other thing, just, you know, I know that there are probably a lot of, uh, data vendors who listen to this, but it's always a really good reminder that there are so many vendors for doing very, very similar things. And it's hard for people to sort through all of the options they have to do very similar functions. Right. And so, and that's actually getting worse because of Snowflake's advantage of building Snowflake native apps, right? Your options are actually proliferating even within the Snowflake environment itself, yeah. Uh, which is a great thing for Snowflake, but is creating an interesting complication for people out there who are trying to decide, you know, which sort of tool sets to put together. So uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how vendors sort of respond to that from, you know, a communication standpoint, content standpoint, all that. But uh, all right, well, we are at the buzzer. Uh, that was my brief overview. I'm sure someone will email and tell me about all the things that I missed, but uh, we'll get someone from the Data AI conference on the show soon, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.